Now we've all heard things you pick up at night always look a little worse the next morning than you thought. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George. I'm here at the awesome flea market outside of Shepherdsville, Kentucky. I am on the way to do the show in Burlington, Kentucky this weekend, but it's a one day show and I'm by myself, so it's hard to film there because I'm busy selling the whole dime. So I thought, well, I'm gonna do a little touring and shopping along the way. I've got just a little room in the car that I can fill. And it's always nice to have fresh stock because the stuff you just bought always seems to sell first. So let's see what we can find here. So I'm gonna voice over some of this because the freeway noise was really roaring in the background. Even Sasquatch is wearing a mask at this place. This bottle is from before 1907. Embossed bottles are popular and you can tell the dates because the collar is applied. Notice how the seam didn't run up all the way to the collar. They didn't have the machinery to do that until the first decade of the 20th century. So they had to have hand blown collars applied to bottles. People really look for the snake oil salesman bottles and the things advertising booze because those went out with the Pure Food and Drug Act in 1906 and then with Prohibition in the 19-teens. So they're the most valuable typically of the embossed bottles. So I like lots of little stuff and this guy's got a lot of little stuff. Let's see. This little retractable tape measure is a souvenir piece from Florida from the 1930s or 40s. And I like this pin. It's Aurora Borealis. That's those carnival glass stones in the middle. Those came out in the late 50s. I'm not sure why they didn't think to do carnival glass in jewelry up until then, but it took them that long to actually use that. I like this because it's a matchbook cover holder and it's the Empire State Building. These were popular in the 30s and 40s and 50s and the Empire State Building was new in 1931. It was the world's tallest building for a long time and a big right. tourist attraction. And then this is a floater pen. Some people call them floaty pens. Anyway, the point is the car with a little shaking will float in a gel and move out of the way of the other cars. There he's in position for the Indianapolis 500. It's from about 1970. They sell for about 10 bucks each. A Zip One lighter. Nice ripoff. So I've got my little pile here from this guy. And he said $30 on everything you're going to see here, which I think is a great deal. I like the Indian pipe the float pen, a couple of little trucker pins, there's a nice compass, and a spoon from the Waldorf Astoria. And then he's got a bunch of pocket watches and knives and some more interesting stuff here. Let's take a look at this. Okay, the guy next to me is getting a really great deal on stuff I like too, but can't have it all. Bunch of badges, so oh, those wings for $5 each are pretty good and some neat Navajo jewelry. The Onyx for 20 bucks is not a bad price. Uh, I see some neat sterling jewelry. Five dollars on that little concho. I think I have to have that. And some more boxes of smalls. Let me get around this guy. These are trade beads from Africa. And they do, in fact, date to that early a date. You can tell because they don't have the white clay on the inside, so they're the originals. These crocs are newer. That bright cobalt is usually 20th century. These ribbons and fobs are neat. These date to the teens and 20s for political and fraternal organizations. They have a neat look. And then that's a piece of hair jewelry in the oval there. See the four-leaf clover? That's all made of human hair. Those were done as remembrances, primarily during and after the Civil War. So let's see, this is more 
just general merchandise, but the Orange Fondue Pot is very 70s, great color. And then I spotted this, and I'm getting it for $2. He's getting my change now. This is Dansk, and it's marked France. If you collect Dansk, doesn't matter if it's a teak ice bucket or something like this for candles, you want it to say France or Denmark. That's older than the stuff they made in other countries later on. Okay, I had to buy it. It was 20 bucks and it says motor core and that's why it's a little bit better because it actually signifies something besides just being a fez. Usually I only sell these for about 25 but this should sell for about $40 because of that right there. And besides which, I think I look styling. <laughs> Okay, so, so far this place is pretty awesome. I am only, gosh, halfway down the first aisle and I've already spent a hundred bucks and I'm filling what little space I have in my van. I've been pretty smart about only buying little things so far. So, we'll see how we do. Okay, so Kentucky license plates, I like that. I like these crates too, but they are not for sale. Let's see, there's the Real Thing Coke, that's from the 70s. And what else does he have in terms of signs? Oh wait, here's a box of more little stuff, that's what I really need to be looking for. And some fake, ooh, look at that. Those are painted on transferware porcelain portraits, probably out of French frames from about 1910 that were mounted probably in the 50s. So he's only got five bucks on it. I've got to get that. What a deal. I like this book on the railways here. It's actually newer than it looks though. You gotta look at the bottom there and you see a 1960s car. So it's not as old as it seems. These are from a pottery company out of Texas. Somewhat collectible. This dealer has some fun stuff. His prices are all over the board. His signs are really expensive. That's cute though. Look at that little advertising silhouette thermometer with the cherub riding the bird. That's really cool. I've got to ask about that. I don't see a price tag on it. It's a little worn, but it's just a neat motif. Oh, I wish this was in better shape. This is a 1950 Studebaker promotional car. 1950 was the year that they made the most cars they ever made. They made over a quarter million in one year, and I wanted one very badly. This is pretty beaten up, though. But uh, if you remember the Muppets Take Manhattan, they drove in a convertible version of that car in that movie. I don't think Muppets really drive, but you know what I'm saying. Some old metal toys here and tin toys, and the prices I see are all out of my reach. On the other hand, this is the same dealer who had those portraits I got cheap, so once you find a bargain on something, you tend to want to look at everything. Whole pile of these old advertising thermometers. They did these from, oh, old wooden ones date back to the Victorian era, all the way up to the 1970s, they were still making these. And that one's for grocery and Phillips 66, so one of the first mini marts. This Budweiser neon, has the bow tie, but it's newer than it looks. These are either Peterborough or Longaberger baskets. And, oh, this guy's been at the swap meet a little too long. Let's see what else they've got down here. The old Coke crate. I buy those sometimes in the plastic, but they're pretty common in the Midwest and the South, so I don't necessarily need another one. 
Speaking of plastic, it's so sad that this is cracked and has bubbles because this is Italian designer from the 70s. Now, most of them are hard to find in good condition, but if you can, they can be worth 150 to 200 because they are good designers and people look for these. Okay, so there's a table of old books and books don't sell like they used to, but there's rarities and particular topics that sometimes do very well. People love children's books, but not so much the primers. Those are pretty common because schools kept them for years and then got rid of them all at once. Now, on the other hand, cats are very popular. Boy, that cat is not happy. <laughs> A very unhappy looking kitty. Aw, oh, but those are very cute. People like these old books too, and it's an early one with a little bit of Technicolor. That looks like Skylar, my old kitty, except he had blue eyes. And the blue Persian, that's very pretty. I have to say I miss him, but I don't miss the fur all over the couch. No More Alibis by Sylvia of Hollywood. I believe this is a diet book from the 1930s, so that you can look like her when you're done if you have that kind of a smashing gown. Diet and exercises for general reducing. There you go. Swing that leg. Daguerreotypes like this often are fuzzy, but that's because they were the earliest form of photography and they used a process involving silver colloid that did not remain stable necessarily with time. You see this scene at Swap Beats a lot where someone pulls up a trailer with a bunch of boxes of stuff they pulled out of storage or a storage locker and they just let people root through it. These are mostly maskless people though. I think I'm going to give this a wide berth. It looks like junk. And then on the ground they just sort of tossed out a bunch of old Tonka toys, 1950s, 60s, 70s. This is a good thing to go through if you're a restorer looking for parts. Now this is a true swap meet, so a lot of things are just whatever, but there in the middle of all of this is this 1972 avocado chip and dip set. Look how fun the people are on that. I love the afro and the one in the middle. So, six bucks? Oh, I'll take it. Okay, I've got one more row to go here, so we'll take a look at that, and then there's the indoors, although a lot of the indoors is new. And real quickly, I know I say this a lot, but I'm really glad to bring this information to you. And please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is hit the button. And then if you hit the like button below, you'll also be notified when I have new videos coming out. And so it uh, helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know that you're interested. And then they tell more people. And my goal is to build this antique community and bring objects together with people, to bring people together from the online and the real world, and just share the joy and passion of all of this. So thank you for doing that, and let's go look at more stuff. So the most awesome flea market in the world is not having an awesome earthquake. My phone camera is starting to go out, so no fault lines, all is well. Okay, so here we go inside the awesome flea market. The indoors is likely to be more new stuff, but they might have some old things too. No guns, no dogs, no alcohol, must wear a mask. Okay, let's go. To the outsider, Kentucky is known for horse racing, but to Kentuckians, the big sport here is actually basketball. Kentucky and Indiana particularly are just wild about basketball, and the Kentucky Wildcats play in a stadium that is bigger than most professional basketball arenas. And these are all ephemera pieces signed by various former players, coaches, there's basketballs, there's team signatures, there's individual player photos. A lot of these teams won national championships and a lot of people went on to play in the professional leagues. And there's a lot more interest in professional sports amongst people of all ages than there used to be and women as well. It used to be that this stuff was mainly the province of male collectors, but women have taken interest, some because they really like sports, and some just because they like to look at guys like this. So another thing we see in Kentucky a lot are old liquor jugs made of crockery from the early 1900s. This one should date to about 1910, I would say, because it says both phones, so 
that was pretty innovative back then. Strictly pure goods for family trade, so I guess it was the family liquor bottle. It is priced at $3.95, I believe. Yeah, that's definitely a local interest price. So this booth has just thousands of salt and pepper shakers, and they're mostly vintage. It's really an impressive display. This is the case with fruits and vegetables. And there's the Florida oranges with Google eyes. That guy looks freaked out on the left. Just neat stuff, it's making me hungry. These are all priced about eight or $10 each. So for a collector, not bad prices. I like the toaster with the toast coming out. Here's a bunch of 1970s era HO trains. And there's some good ones here, some Athern and Better Companies. These are starting to be collectible. It used to be that people only wanted the big old Lionel trains, but now they want these old cabooses from the 70s and the trucks, because this is the last sort of great era of model railroading that a lot of young kids were into. It seems to have become an older person's hobby now. Here's some Japanese tin from the 50s and 60s next to a ton of Tootsie toys. These were made in Chicago. They were monochrome. They were the cheap toys back when I was a kid, but they're collectible too. Okay, well I had some fun. I bought some cool stuff and I am on my way to the estate sale because I've got time to do that and then get to where I need to go to set up for tomorrow's show. So here we are by the Lock and Dam at the Ohio River going to Warsaw, Kentucky, where there is an estate sale. This was my original destination before I stopped at the flea market, but it was such a long drive I just needed a break, and the flea market was great. So we will see what's left at this sale here in Warsaw. There's the Ohio River looking very pretty on this warm day. There's the back bay. The Ohio River is wide and shallow enough here. There's actually a marina, which is not always the case in this stretch of it. And up ahead here, we see, oh, fake palm trees and a Sputnik-y looking thing. Okay, this is an RV park. We're not to the estate sale yet, but that's pretty cool looking there at least fun colors and here we go over a little causeway and the estate sale should come up any moment now so this is the estate sale house a cute house my phone is having the dts for some reason but i will get it fixed soon here's a bunch of really cool carved birds now i look for particular artists and unfortunately a lot of these are newer but they are really neat looking some of them even have tags with their names on them. These are recent production and they're mostly offshore, so not something I would sell, but they were pretty cool to look at anyway. Now here we go. This is more my speed. Pink depression glass, luster wear. There's some really cute sets in here. And we've got coffee grinders here in the kitchen, but these are all priced about $45 each, and that's what I get for them retail, so that doesn't really leave me very much room. Let's see what else is in the kitchen here. Well, a lot of general kitchen stuff. Nice things, but a lot of it is newer than what I buy. So this is bright and happy outdoors, and there's a bunch of enamelware, some from the 50s like the red with the white lids, and then some from the 60s and 70s, this blue speckled here. This is old enough. Some of this is really lightweight like this. It looks good, but it's really light, and that lets you know that it's newer. It's just not a heavy enough gauge to be old. But this one here, yeah, this one's got a little more weight and it's five dollars it's a cute color with the robin's egg blue and the speckles even though it's probably 60s era rather than way back into the teens or 20s i will definitely get that i actually like the lime green but again that's going to be newer these are old they've got the chips to show it but i don't like them with chips if i can avoid it and let's see this colander here yeah, again, it's just really flimsy, so we know it's not very old. Okay, so I spent about $15 on some cute blue luster wear pieces from the 1930s. I thought of Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter because she's collecting that stuff now. In the meantime, let's go into the barn and see what they've got there. They even have food here. Look at this delicious food. Beanie weenies. Mm. 
Well, it turns out that was just a preview because they're not selling the stuff in the barn until next week. I guess this is a three-week sale. I have to be honest, I'm not sure why there doesn't seem to be that much stuff in there, but everyone conducts their sales differently. So I am on my way to Burlington to set up for the antique show, unless some shiny object or garage sale attracts me on the way. On the way, I wanted to show you the curiously named Big Bone Lick State and National Historic Natural Park. And the reason that this is an important site is this was the beginning of paleontology in the United States. President Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis on his way to meet Clark for the Lewis and Clark expedition through this part of Kentucky in order to explore this spot because this is where mammoth bones were found. Apparently in ancient times the mammoths would come here because there was a big salt lick and the big bones were found here, hence the name. And so this is a neat little side trip and down the road here is a, another cool little town called Rabbit Hash, a little old time settlement on the Ohio River. We'll see if we have a chance to go see that. And there's a mastodon now or at least a statue of a mastodon. They haven't been seen since the end of the last ice age. This was the edge of where the glaciers came during the last ice age, and that's why this bog would have been here and why the salt lick would have been exposed and an attraction to mammals. However, it was also a muddy peat bog and some of them got stuck and, well, their remains are still here for us to see today. You'd never know it by this crowd behind me, but for a long time, Rabbit Hash was a forgotten little port on the Ohio River, a teeny tiny little settlement. It is now a National Historic District. And when I was here last time, I bought some pretty cool antiques. There were two shops. One was in the old general store. It was all full of really interesting collectibles and unfortunately it burned a couple of years ago. But it was such an important place that they rebuilt it. So I'm curious to see if they rebuilt it with the other things or whether it does not have the antiques and vintage anymore, we'll go take a look. A little bit of background on Rabbit Hash here. Started as a steamboat destination and it has been through a lot, including the big flood of 1937. So we'll turn that motorcycle noise down a little and show you what rabbit hash looks like now. It looks like they were able to preserve, in addition to the historic buildings, a really good facsimile of the general store. It really doesn't look different. Unfortunately for me, even though there are antiques, they're primarily for display now, but they do make it look really cool and feel very genuine and authentic like it did originally. The Ohio River is almost a thousand miles. And this is one of the few towns from this vintage that's still left. Across the river from me, you see a stern wheeler or a side wheeler, an old steamboat. That's the sort of thing that would have been plying this river back in the days that Rabbit Hash was a new settlement. And that town across from us is Rising Sun, Indiana. Anyhow, I've got to go set up at my antique show, but it was fun to come and show you Rabbit Hash amongst the other fun things along the way. Well, I'm going to try to be quiet because a lot of people are in bed, but I'm going to prowl around and see if anyone else is still setting up. I got my tent up and everything out, and I am ready for tomorrow. This is a one-day show, but I just have a feeling it's going to be a really big one. It's almost the end of the season. So looking down, we can see some things in the dark. It'll be interesting to see what I can show you and what will actually be able to record. This is extreme night shopping. Looks like a cool the old jewel thing. Looks like it's all fixed up. Or it could be a more recent one. We can't really tell because it's dark. One problem about shopping in the dark is you really can't see. <laughs> Here's the guy who gets all the Lionel trains. There's the surface train. And all of his box cars and other things. Ooh, that's cool. It looks like the end of it. 
They have lamps galore. Literally just us and the crickets and frogs. These folks have some of their stuff out. I think I'm the only person who's completely set up. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. But hey, I am happy to open tomorrow and be ready to go. Most people come in the middle of the night and get ready for 6 a.m. opening. Personally, I think that's crazy. I did that last time, and that was because I did the Burton show on Saturday and had to drive here and then unpack in the middle of the night. It was exhausting. I am very glad I came and set up today. You know, I love a good funhouse mirror. And there I am in a good funhouse mirror. Got a couple of guys working hard here in the middle of the night. It's about 11. 30 p.m. and they're pulling stuff off the trailer, getting ready for tomorrow morning. Nice slag glass lamp right in the middle there. That is a pink cattail lamp. I love those right out of the 50s. My neighbors mainly brought some primitives and farmstead stuff. This is their first time at the show. Little kid's Ford tractor in front of this tent. That's out of the 70s. Maybe early 80s. I always thought those were cool. I wasn't enough of a farm kid to have one though. Under the table, there's a blow mold Santa. That'll pop out tomorrow morning. Here's some more stuff. It's so funny creeping around in the middle of the night. This guy's got a bunch of those industrial moles I'm always talking about. Those you should be able to see because it's pretty bright. And he's got buckets full of them over here. Here's a space we can see too. They've got a bunch of ladders put together. You can make shelves out of ladders like they're kind of doing there. Also an old cast iron bed. Ooh, I see a neat little dental or medical office thing, but let's look at these ladders first. If you put rails between those, you'd have to turn it around where that buttress on the one is facing the other way, but you can line ladders up and put shelves between them. A lot of people are doing that in farm stores, Places that are doing primitives and rustic stuff. But this dealer also has, if you look over there past the bed, some really groovy orange chairs. I'm going to take a look at those real quick. Too bad there's only three. And then this thing here, which is some sort of a medical device. I love the shape of the table and the drawers are really great. I'm not sure how you'd use it with all of that laboratory equipment on it, but it's pretty cool. And then a standard of Ohio garbage can. I lost a lot of money on standard of Ohio stock at one point in my life. Well, since I'm creeping around in the middle of the night, I guess it's appropriate that there are skeletons. A bunch of milk glass over here. Looks like mainly Westmoreland patterns. And a little bit of Fenton. I won't go in there because it's the middle of the night, but there's a lamp similar to the one I just bought. And off in the distance, one more row of lights we can inspect. These folks have the right idea. They are under a brightly lit pavilion and they can unpack in the middle of the night. And let's see what they're unpacking. Let's just take a quick look here. Prints and glassware, and that's going to be a fun display. And the nice thing is they're under cover, so if we have bad weather, they're all right. And then those folks down there are setting up too. It's fun to look. I see a big fountain down there. I will go take a look at that for you. Let's see what that looks like a little closer up. Wow, look at that. 
looks like it's cast iron or metal of some sort with the birds at the base. Some pretty groovy 70s avocado lamps next to it. And then these folks have a pretty cool lab tray. I like that. With the wheels. Pretty useful. You might have to come back and look at that tomorrow. There is a crock and a half. Neat old hook rug there too. That's a nice big one. Room size. Class booth, which is over here for Midnight Madness. They're not here, so I can't buy anything, but I see a brass bed. I see some newer Christmas and an old cap of the laundry flower figure in here. Right in the middle. And when you look back there, there's all sorts of furniture and little lamps and a bust of a woman in a bonnet. So we shall see in the morning what this looks like. Now we've all heard that things that you pick up at night when it's dark and late always look a little worse the next morning than you thought they did in the benefit of the shadows. However, I'm pretty happy that I got this lamp. It's about midnight. We have to get up at six for the early buyers, so I'm gonna go to bed. But I think this lamp's really cool. It does have a little corrosion, but it's right out of the 50s. You don't see these cattails like you used to. And the pink and green is a really good color combination. The main important thing is the switch works, the plug is good, and the pink fiberglass shades are in great shape. And I expect this will be a winner in Florida. I paid 30 bucks. I expect it'll sell for 65 to 85. And I'm happy and content and ready to go to bed. So thanks for joining me. This is George the Antique Nomad. Every day on Periscope. Well, not every day on Periscope. Lots of times on Periscope and every day on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and here Mondays and Wednesdays on YouTube. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.